Hi guys, this is Kaika. I'm here with a video to share with you guys how to travel Japan for cheap. I've been to Japan like three times last year. On the average, I spent less than $2,200. In fact, for two of my trips, I spent actually less than $1,800. And for both trips, they range from 10 days to 15 days. Everyone always has the impression that Japan is very expensive, but actually it is not that expensive now. And if you follow my tips, you can save a lot of money and make it even more affordable. Tip number one, it is to find the cheapest flight that you can. I know it's pretty self-explanatory, everyone wants to you know, f have the cheapest flight. But there are sometimes some people who don't want to compromise comfort. But if you want to save, definitely you need to sacrifice something. Sometimes it means a flight that it has a longer overlay on a budget airline. The tip is to buy your tickets as early as you possibly can. Stock all the airline websites for their promotions and in any upcoming deals. Um, sign up for their newsletter so that they can inform you when the sale comes up and check out travel booking websites like Zuji.com, Expedia, Fair Compare. Those websites are really useful for you to compare all the fares across all the different airlines. One tip though is try not to book directly from those travel booking websites because they do charge a commission. Just use it to search for the flight that you want and then go to the official airline website and buy your flight tickets there. Tip number two, travel light. Skip the check-in baggage. If you're flying via a budget airline, you most likely have to pay for your check-in baggage. So if you skip the check-in baggage, you can save a lot of money. What I usually like to do is I would go over to the destination with just a carry-on baggage and then come back with check-in baggage. Because after all, I am going to buy something there. It's Japan. You're definitely going to buy something. So if you're interested to know how to pack everything into one carry-on baggage, click below. I have a vlog entry and I'll probably do up a vlog for that too. Tip number three, choose between a return or an open city ticket. Usually, return tickets are a lot cheaper, but Sometimes if you want to travel between states or provinces, it might make more sense for you to buy an open CD ticket so that you can fly in for example into Tokyo and then fly out from Osaka or Aomori or any other city because you will be going in a straight line downwards. So if for example you are flying into Tokyo, you want to go to Osaka or Kyoto, you come down and then you have to go back up to Tokyo again just to fly back to your country. So all the internal transit will usually end up spending more money and more time. So it might be more worth it to spend a little bit more and buy an open city ticket. Tip number four, kind of similar to tip number three, and that is to plan a logical itinerary. You cannot do everything and see everything within one trip unless you're spending like one or two months in Japan. If it's just a five days, four night, or six days, five nights trip, try not to cram both Tokyo and Kyoto into one place because you are not going to be able to enjoy both of them fully and spot expenses usually ranks the highest after your flight and accommodations. So if you want to go to a place that is slightly off the beaten path, it might actually cost you more money to get there. For example, I actually went to Shirakawa Go in uh, Ishikawa province, I think. Uh, Shirakawa Go is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but it's actually a small little queen village that's in the mountains. And just going there from Kanazawa cost me near 30 US dollars and if I do it as a day trip I would have to spend 60 US dollars just to get there and then come back so if you're going to places like this that is so difficult and so expensive to reach I would recommend staying one night there just so you can experience the vibe and you don't feel so rushed having to like rush for the first bus over there and then last bus back so plan a logical itinerary Check out the local tourist office if you have the time, when you are there I mean. Because sometimes they have discount package that is difficult to buy outside of Japan. So for example, when I was in Kanazawa, I went to the bus terminal tourist office, I can't remember what it's called. But I managed to buy a 3 star rock ticket that allows me to go from Kanazawa to Shirakawago and then Takayama and then Matsumoto. Which just happened to be the route that I wanted to take. 
and that entire trip only cost 5,140 yen which is a huge saving for me. So in short, arrange your trip in such a way that it minimizes tra uh, traveling if possible and it will lead you directly to your flyout city. Tip number 5, scrimp reasonably on accommodations. I know there's a lot of buzz around Airbnb but personally as a solo traveler, a hostel or a dormitory is still more affordable. Airbnb usually have better rooms and they are bigger but I mean for a solo traveler you don't need so much space right? I think Airbnb is usually more suitable for people with a bigger group but sometimes some hotels can be even cheaper or they can be in a better location with just slightly different prices with food provided. So don't just select the cheapest accommodation. Find one that is easy to access, the location is okay, it doesn't take you like forever to reach the tourist attractions. Um, there are trains and buses that go directly to that area. Uh, check out whether they provide a breakfast, whether they provide things like towels or and toiletries and whether do they provide other free like other free stuff like a free bicycle rental. I know the questions might sound trivial but little things can really add up. So if you are very close to the tourist attraction, what that means is you can minimize your cost on transport because you can just walk to the tourist attractions. You spend lesser time getting lost. You know, getting lost in a in a strange environment it can be fun sometimes but can be very frustrating other times. And if your hostel provides a free bicycle rental, that's an even awesome thing because you can just bike around the town the whole day and you know and not mess with any other public transport. That means you can schedule your own timetable, you can decide to go wherever you want and come back whenever you want. And of course you save a lot of money. Don't settle for just the cheapest, make sure you take in all your different options, find which is the most suitable one for you and then book it. Tip number six, find the cheapest way out of the airport. Many, many years ago, before I actually stepped into Japan, my friends were sharing with me that even getting out of the airport was so expensive. Like it cost $80 just to get out from the airport. I was like so appalled. So apparently they were talking about the airport limousine bus. Well, if we are talking about Narita airport, there is now a lot of different transport modes out of the airport. You can get out from the airport with a bus or a train. Of course, if you are rich, you can rent your own taxi. But for normal people like me, I usually take the train uh, depending on where I'm staying. There's now a couple of new shuttle bus that transport from Narita to the city area for just 1000 yen. Even though it only brings you to certain uh, main train stations and you still need to find your way around after that, generally it is one of the cheapest options because even taking the train out, the normal local train out from Japan will cost you a minimum of 1002 or something like that. So of course, different airports will have different arrangements. What I mean to say is do your research before jumping into the first option and try and see if there is any cheaper alternative because sometimes there really is a lot of cheap alternatives. Tip number seven, avoid buying a JR pass. Yes, a JR pass is good if you are going to be going to many different places in Japan or you have a very long trip. But I think JR Pass is usually not suitable for most travelers. Well, there are many reasons why someone would like to buy a JR Pass, but I like to think that the main reason anyone buys a JR Pass is because they need to take the Shinkansen twice. If you're not taking a long distance Shinkansen, let's say for example from Tokyo to Kyoto or Tokyo to Osaka, if you're not taking two trips, then don't buy a JR Pass because it is probably not worth the money. If you're only staying in Tokyo, then definitely don't buy a JR Pass. Any singular province, don't buy a JR Pass because you can just get around with a Suica, like a normal train ticket. A JR Pass is only recommended if you're taking the Shinkansen more than twice. Tip number eight, take an overnight bus. If you really must, travel long distances and like from Tokyo to Osaka, instead of taking the Shinkansen, you can consider the overnight bus. 
Overnight bus, as the name implies, is an overnight bus from one province to another. It's usually five, six hours, a lot more affordable, and it is pretty comfortable. And of course, you save one night of accommodation. I believe there are many different bus service provider in Japan. I've only tried Winner Express and I've had very good impression of them. The seats are comfortable, spacious, there's a privacy screen and um, yeah, it's a lot cheaper than a Shinkansen. In fact, Winner Express even have a tourist pass that you can use for 3 days, 5 days or 7 days. Uh, the 3 bay pass is 10,000 yen, the 5 day pass is 12,500 yen, the 7,000, the 7 day pass is 15,000 yen and the days are non-consecutive as long as you use it within 2 months. So that is so flexible for a traveller. You can use it, let's say for example, I'm in Tokyo today, I'm taking an overnight bus to Osaka and then from Osaka, I'll take an ov overnight bus to Hiroshima and then I'll take another or overnight bus from Hiroshima to well, somewhere else. So that's three days and it only cost me 10,000 yen. So if you do the math, you know that it's a good saving. If you're interested to know more about that, check out my blog to see my blog post. Tip number nine, choose the cheaper route. The train system in Japan is mind-boggling. Train lines is just... So it's very complicated. Uh, so usually it's better to let the computers do the brain work for you. So I like to use Hyperdia when I'm in Japan. Hyperdia is basically a train timetable and route search engine. So you kind of put it where you are now and where you want to go to. It tells you how to get to the destination. The good thing about Hyperdia is it not only tells you one route, it gives you a few routes to choose from. So it will show you what trains to take, where to take it, where should you change your trains, how much it costs and how long the journey is. So it's very easy for you to just choose among the routes that is given and then decide which is the one that you would like to take. So of course, I usually like to take the cheaper alternative. Usually the time difference isn't that big. You just might need to walk a little bit more to save a bit of money. If you want to save money, you need to sacrifice something. So if I need to walk for an extra five minutes just to save 100 yen, I would definitely do that because, well, it's exercise and saving money. Two good things at the same time, right? So other than Hyperdia, you can also use Google to search for your train routes for you directly. Just go to google.com and just type, like say for example, Tokyo to Shinjuku and it will give you the search results with similar um, information like Hyperdia. It tells you what time, where to change, how to get there, how much is the ride, how long it takes and blah blah blah. So let the computers do the brain work for you and choose the cheaper route. Number 10, finally, to stay connected and buy a data SIM card. I know it sounds a bit um, small for people like me that is always on the go a lot. I'm going to many different cities, you know, I'm not in the hotel room or in the hostel room for a long time. So on the go, I want to search for directions on how to get to the attractions. Well, you can search beforehand, but sometimes your plans will change. So it allows you to just quickly search and really valuable information like what is the closing time of the attractions that you want to go to and how to get there, you know, things like that. So basically, just staying connected allows me to make the right decision at the right times. And um, there are many different options for prepaid SIM card in Japan. Now, if you are more interested to know where to get a prepaid SIM card in Japan, you can check out my blog entry. I will link them below. So I hope this video isn't too long. I hope you guys learned something. Please remember to subscribe and comment and let me know what you think. Bye!